Hey guys, this is just going to be a fairly simple relative motion problem. So let's say that we've got this wheel right here, and this wheel is rolling across this floor to the right in such a way that the velocity of our center point O is going to be 4 meters per second to the right. right? Um, now my question to you is, what is the velocity of A? What is the velocity of A? So that means we need to provide both a magnitude and a direction, right? In order to answer this question, we need to know a few things. First of all, I'm going to assume this is under a case of pure roll. In other words, there's not going to be any slipping of this of this ball as it's rolling or of this wheel as it's rolling. It's, it's going to be stuck to the ground, which means then that it's also going to be rotating at an angular velocity of omega. Right now, in order to answer this problem of what the velocity at point A is, I need to cover a little bit of intuition here. First of all, imagine this ball or wheel rolling across this floor. That's the exact same thing as imagining this ball or wheel sliding across the floor and simultaneously rotating. Right? I hope that makes sense. That's, it's a little bit of a strange concept to imagine, but it's absolutely crucial for the sake of engineering to do it. Okay, so now that we've got that sorted, let's also cover a little bit of... Um, uh, let's, let's cover a formula which I derived in a previous video, which was if we've got a ball or a wheel rolling across this floor with a velocity VO, right? This is, just a, this is something I proved in a previous video, and this wheel has a radius R, then that means that its angular velocity must be equal to VO on R. So let me write that down. That means that VO, VO must be equal to R omega. This is something I proved in a previous video. I won't go into detail here. I, like, I, won't, I won't prove it in this particular video, but this is a very useful formula to use. Okay, now that we've got that sorted, let's directly get into solving this problem. First of all, we know that v that the velocity of a is going to have two components. It's going to have the component due to the translational movement of this entire block as if it were sliding to the right, and it's also going to have a component of velocity purely due to rotation. How do we account for this? Well, fortunately, we've got one formula which can really help us. We've got the formula we've got the formula v a relative to o is going to be equal to the velocity of a, which I'll draw in blue sorry, I'll draw in green, minus the velocity of O. Okay, so we've got this particular relative motion formula to help us figure out what the velocity of A is. Remember, we're trying to solve for this right here. Well, it, th th this may be quite difficult to imagine, but if I were to get point A here and add and literally draw these velocities on here, it would look like this. VA would have a component VO to the right, Right, that's purely due to the translational movement, but it will also have a component VAO acting upwards. Right, And this may be confusing you right now, but it's really quite simple. Just imagine putting your index finger on point O. Now imagine this wheel trying to undergo its regular movement. From the perspective of O, this wheel will only rotate, meaning that VA, or at least the component of VA relative to O, is going to be upwards. That's as if this wheel was only rotating. So this is going to be the velocity of A relative to O. I really want to hammer down that fact. It's as if it's rotating about point O. Okay, now that I've got that point hammered down, and I think maybe a little bit too hard, I, I'm going to now draw these velocity vectors just below. So let me zoom out a little bit to make a little bit of space. Oop, too far? All right. So I'm going to end up drawing these velocity vectors right here. This is going to be VAO. It's going to be upwards. We don't know what its magnitude is yet, but we just know it's up at this point. Right? What about VO? Well, we know it's to the right, and we also know it's at 4 meters per second. That was in the question. This is going to be VO. Right? But we don't know anything yet about the velocity of A. We don't know its direction, and we don't know the magnitude. Well, that's what we're going to use this formula here to calculate. Okay, so let's, let's, let's start by making VA the subject of this equation. If we do that, then VA, then VA is going to be equal to is going to be equal to VAO, that's the velocity of A relative to O, plus, plus VO. 
Okay, so now this is really crucial here because we can try and we can actually figure out the direction of of the velocity of a graphically. So let's do that. We know from vector algebra that this right hand side can be expressed graphically as if we start at this point, VA must be traveling upwards, right? Because we know VA is upwards, so that's VAO. So VAO is upwards. VO must be to the right, and it's being added, so that means we're just going to go from head to tail. So this is going to be there, this is going to be VO. Right now, what's VA? Well, we know that it's equal to these two, which means then that it's the exact same thing as starting from here and ending up here. This is going to be VA. This is just using a little bit of vector algebra here. Okay, well, not only do we know that, but because we know VAO at this point is perfectly upwards and VO is perfectly to the right, that means that this right here is a right angle triangle. Okay, this should be setting off alarm bells now because this is just a small step away from using trigonometry to solve for VA. But we don't know how to solve for this yet. We know v, VO, but we don't know what the magnitude of VAO is yet. We just know that it's upwards and we know it's going under rotational movement. So what we're going to end up doing is, figure out, is figuring out what VAO is. So VAO is equal to, well, it's going to be, Remember, VAO was purely due to rotation about point O, meaning that from circular motion, we know that VAO is just equal to the distance from O to A, O to A, times by the angular velocity about O. So in other words, we can write this as the distance from O to A times by our angular velocity. But recall, I discussed earlier that the angular velocity is given by this equation right here. So I'll just write that down. That's 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 the magnitude of our velocity at O is equal to r omega. That's proof from another video I made. We're going to use that now to solve for omega and sub it into here. So if we do that, we're left with the velocity of a relative to O is going to be equal to O A times by omega, which in this case is just the magnitude of our velocity at O divided by our radius. Okay, so we're almost there. What's what's OA? What's this distance? What's OA? It's this distance right here, right? Which coincidentally happens to be our radius of our circle. So we can write that in here now, going that I should really put magnitudes around here. So we can write this as the magnitude of VAO is going to be equal to the radius of our circle times by the magnitude of our velocity at O divided by the radius of our circle. These cancel out, thankfully, leaving us with this really interesting equation that the velocity of A relative to O is going to be equal to the magnitude of our velocity of O. That's huge. That's, that's, that's something that may not be intuitive to you guys, but this is a really interesting expression. And this is only true at point A that, that we figured out so far. Okay, so now we can use this now to plug it back into our triangle. So let me just copy this triangle and paste it below. This is our triangle. Let me just, let me literally try and drag that down. Oh, almost there. I'll just redraw it. This is our triangle right here. We've got We've got VA relative to O right here. This is the magnitude of VA relative to O. This is the magnitude of VO. And this right here, if you recall, was just the velocity of A, right? So th this is our triangle we had before, right? But now we know what the magnitude of this is and we know what the magnitude of this is. So we can use trigonometry to solve this, right? So let's do that. We know using Pascal's triangle, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I hope you remember that from like year 10 maths, right? Meaning that we can write now that the magnitude of VAO squared plus the magnitude of VO squared must be equal to, must be equal to the magnitude of VA squared, right? Well, that's fairly simple. Now that we know that now that we know that VAO is just VO, we can just write, the, we can literally substitute that in. We can go VO squared plus VO squared is going to be equal to VA 
All right, and I'll square root both sides, noting that VA is just positive in this case. We can simplify this down to, this is going to be equal to our VA, the magnitude of VA is going to be equal to, and if we simplify this left-hand expression, it's going to be equal to the magnitude of VO times by the square root of 2, right? So now we've got a really interesting solution here. We've got an expression for the magnitude of our velocity of A. So let's plug that in. We know that VO, the magnitude of VO is 4 meters per second. We know it's 4 meters per second to the right, which means its magnitude is 4 meters per second. So we can sub that in, and that's 4 times root 2. Let me write that down. That's VA is 4 meters per second times by root 2, which means that VA, the magnitude of VA, oops, I'm running out of space here, which means that the magnitude of VA, VA must be equal to 4 root 2, which is 5.656 meters per second. Okay, that's crucial. But remember, we're asked to find the velocity of A, which means both magnitude and direction, right? Which means that we need to figure out this angle right here. Well, considering this is also VO, right? That means that this is actually, um, th that this means that this angle here is 45 degrees and this angle is 45 degrees. We can prove, th we can prove this using um, trigonometry as well, which means that this angle theta must be equal to 45 degrees as well. So let me just draw an arrow here. This is... 45 degrees just there. That is our answer. I hope that makes sense, guys.